Remember, the F in physics stands for fun. Wait, there's no F in physics. <laughs> like, exactly. So we're going to do projectile motion. I'm going to give you an extra example because I think it's important to do one now that's more involved where we have angles. I've tried to think of like the most complicated thing uh, that I've seen show up on an exam. So this is going to be a tougher one, but I think we can absolutely get through it. First step exam tips here. What we need to do is break things up into components. Remember, we need to find Vx and Vy. And uh, remember, this is uh, V cos theta, and this one here is V sine theta. That's in general here. Then in the horizontal land, in other words, with Vx here, well, because there's no acceleration in the horizontal world, that means that we can say that it's just distance over time. In other words, it's just like Sx over time. And the vertical world, it accelerates. And why does it accelerate? Because it's got gravity acting downwards, right? So because of that, then we're going to use SUVAT. But remember, I like to put little subscript Ys all over the place here on these ones right here, at least with these ones. There we go. So that's how I like to do these. So let's see if we can get through this example here. Okay, so let's consider a situation where we have a pizza and it's launched off a cliff that is 100 meters above the ground. And it's launched at a speed of 50 meters per second. Now keep in mind that 50 meters per second is this value right here. It's like it's going up here at 50 meters per second here. Okay, so that's the speed that's being launched up this way. Now it's at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And the first part of the question says, well, what's the maximum height above the ground? So keep in mind, what kind of path is this thing going to follow? It's going to go like this right here and then probably fall down, like a nice parabola here. So in this case, when we talk about maximum height above the ground, we care about this point right here. We basically want to know what is this. Okay, so let's try to find that. I think first of all, before we do anything else, it's important to go ahead and calculate, for example, what is Vx and what is Vy. That's the first thing I said we would do, so let's do that. So since we have this thing at 50, because remember, I'm trying to figure out the component, the x component of the velocity, and I'm trying to consider the y component of the velocity. And again, Vx is just going to be V cos theta, and Vy is V sine theta. So let's put in the numbers. That means it's going to be 50 times cosine, in this case of 30 degrees, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, not radians, that's going to be 50 sine 30 degrees. So I'm going to need my calculator to help me out with this, so let's open that up. Let's see what happens. First of all, make sure I'm in degree mode, not radian, degrees. All right, I want 50 cos theta, sorry, it's 50 times cosine of, I wanted 30 degrees. I press enter, and away I go. I have 43.3 roughly. So I'll write that down. Here you go, 43.3. Remember, it's not exactly, but it's pretty close to that. And 50 sine theta, let me do that one then. So 50, I'll just go up and steal this number right here. But instead of cos, I'll say sine. I'll just type in sine, there we go. So I have exactly 25. That's because sine of uh, 30 is the same thing as saying sine of what's that, pi over 6, and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we have it at 25 is our answer. Okay. Well, what do we do with these pieces? I mean, these are going to be important, right? So now we have Vx right here, and we have Vy. Those are going to be important for later, right? These are going to be our key things here that we're going to be using. So what will be the maximum height above the ground? Do you think I consider the Y component or the X component? Well, for maximum height above the ground, does that make sense? I'm going to consider the y component, in other words, vertical, where it does accelerate. So that means I'm going to need this idea of S U V A T. I'm going to make all my things with little subscripts of y just to be safe. So S Y U Y V Y A Y. T doesn't make sense, right? Because T is just a time. So SY, is that what I'm looking for? It actually is. I want to know what is this height. Now keep in mind what we're finding. We're going to be finding the height above where it took off. In other words, what we're about to find here, we're about to calculate this value right here. It's really important to know. We're not calculating the height above the ground. In other words, this right here doesn't take into account the fact that we're above the ground. It's just going to tell me the height above where it took off. It's going to say, oh, at a height above this, that's where it is. So we're going to have to be clever with our answer here. So let's see. So we have SY. Uh, that's actually what I want. 
UI, do I know the initial speed in the y direction? I do, it's 25, and it's plus 25 because it's going up. VY, do I know the final speed? Yes, only because of maximum height. What does that mean? That means that the speed, so VY equals zero. That's the key thing that happens here. At the top, at the very, very top here, at the maximum height, you think about it, it's going up, it's going to slow down until it stops, then it's going to go down again, only in the vertical direction, of course. Horizontal is just going straight. It's going to go at a constant 43.3 meters per second to the right, always. But in the vertical direction, it starts off with an initial vertical speed of 25, and it'll eventually stop up here at maximum height, and then it's going to go down again. So that means at that maximum height, this value is zero. That's the one that wasn't obvious, okay? So that's the key. At maximum height, the vertical speed is zero. Acceleration is minus 9.81 because the acceleration due to gravity, gravity acts downwards. And time, do I know that? I don't, and I don't care. So do I have an equation now in my data booklet that has no T in it, that has an S? I do. I have one that goes V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And if that's the case, then away I go. I can just calculate it. So I know that V is going to be 0, so that's going to help me. Um, and I want to find out S, so it's going to be minus U squared. I'm going to move this U squared over to the left. It's going to be a minus U squared. I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by A. That's how I get S by itself. Yes, okay, so if you slowly, slowly take your time, you'll get this. All right, well, then what do I do then? I just put in the numbers. So I'll have minus, let's see, I'm going to have minus U, which is 25 squared. Remember, it's a minus outside the bracket here. Divide that by 2 times negative 9.81. Good news, this minus this minus will cancel each other out. And so I'm going to end up with a positive. That's good because it should be upwards. So let me get out my calculator and figure this out. So I'm going to have, let's see, 25 squared. I'll do 25 squared, yes. Um, and I'm going to do Let's see here, I'll do a fraction here, I'll do so minus 625, that's what 25 squared was. Divide that by 2 times negative, whoops, 9.81. If I do that, I end up with 31.855, and those will be meters. So keep in mind now, what I've found, I have not found the maximum height. I've found this value right here, this is really, really important. Okay. So this value right here, the answer then, SY, is approximately equal to 32 meters, but that's not my answer. Okay, and That's not my answer because I've just found this value right here. I need to add to that the 100 meters. Does that make sense? So keep in mind, no, it's not 32 meters. That's not the answer. It's part of it. But the reason is because we just found out its maximum height is 32 meters above where it started. So that's fine. We know that's 32. So what do we say? We say that the max height then is going to be what? It's going to be, well, this number of 32 plus 100 meters because that's it already started off 100 meters above the ground. So that means it's going to be 132 meters. And normally we would think we're done, but just in this particular case, I've only given you two significant figures. So that means I would say, I mean, in this case right here, at least is 130 meters, but that's only because I'm saying it in um, two significant figures. I'll write down 2SF, because I mean, my answer really you know, should be something more like 132. But there we go. Okay, we have a part B to this question, but I thought because it's about pizza, look, yeah, I'm into fitness, fitness, whole pizza in my mouth. <laughs> It's so stupid, I know. <laughs> All right, so we look at this in here. Remember, it's path, it's path in the air. It still goes like this right here. But what are we asking for now? Well, we're asking for how far from the base of the cliff will it land. In other words, we are looking for this value right here. We want to know this. And since it's in the x direction, I'll call it sx. In other words, I'm looking for the x component of the displacement here. So I want to know this value right here. Well, then let's just consider the horizontal land, so to speak. That's going to be easy. In the horizontal land, remember, there's no acceleration. It's constant speed in the horizontal. So that means I can just use this equation. Well, Vx is just going to be equal to the distance over time because it doesn't accelerate. So that means I can write myself a new equation. Then that goes Vx equals, well, the distance is Sx 
That's how we're going to define it here over time. Okay, well, and I'm looking for sx, aren't I? So that means I can say, okay, sx then equals vx times t. So that means then all I need to do is just put in these values. Do I know vx? I do. It's 43.3 meters per second. Look, that's the x component here of the speed. So I have 43.3 times t. But uh-oh. I don't know this. Um, and actually, I need this. So how do I do this? I mean, I need to know t in order to know sx. So that's why in this case, we're going to then go into the vertical land to help us because I need to know the time of flight. In other words, I'm going to need to know how long is it in the air before it lands. And I can use the vertical land for that one. So because of that, in the vertical land, remember, s u v a t, because it does accelerate in the vertical world. And I'm going to put my little y components everywhere just to be safe, to make sure I'm as clear as I can be. Okay, so s y. What is my displacement? This is going to be really important. From the start to when I land, what's the displacement? Do you see that from the beginning? Remember, we don't care how high it goes now. We found that from before. Before we found out what the height was, maximum height. Now we don't care about that. So part A, it's dead to me. Now I look only at part B, which is I start here, and where do I finish? Well, I finish down here. And what's my vertical displacement? Only in the vertical world, I ended up just going from here, just going down 100 meters, didn't I, in order to go here? Like, I start off this height, and I went down. That means there I'm going to say minus 100 meters. Now, you, I, what's my final, uh, sorry, my initial y speed? I do have that. I have in the upwards direction. I have uh, initially in the y direction. I'm going 25, so that's plus 25. Final y speed, I actually don't know. I don't know how fast it's going to go. I mean, oh, right here, it's going to be going minus 25 because it's symmetric to this piece. But I don't know what happens here. I don't know. But minus uh, 9.81 here, and here I want t. So I need to find myself an equation that doesn't have v in it, but that has a t in it. Do I have one of those? I actually do. I have the equation that goes v, uh, oh, sorry. It goes s equals ut plus one half a t squared. Here's the problem. There's going to be two t's. That's why this is about as tough as it gets. But we're going to solve it. Let's just put in the, you know, put in where there's zeros or put in what we know and we'll figure it out. So first of all, uh, let's just put in the numbers that we know here. So do I know s? I do. It's a minus 100. Okay, so that's going to equal u times t. So that means it's going to be 25 times t. So I'll put that down, 25t plus 1 half times, well, what's a? a is uh, negative. 9.81, and then I put in t squared. Uh, okay, now what? Well, um, now I can figure out what is a half of 9.81. It should be like 4.9, shouldn't it? Something like that. So 9.81 divided by 2. Yeah, 4.905. Okay. I mean, this is a 4.905, so I'll just fix that. So minus 100 equals 25t minus 4.905t squared. This looks like a quadratic, doesn't it? So that's why I said this is as, about as tough as it gets, just because of finding the t value here. But that's okay, we can find it. So let's go ahead and try to solve for this. I'm going to move everything over to one side. I like doing that for quadratic. So that means I'm going to have 0 equals, let's see, and I'll have this one here lead. I'll have uh, my t squared in front, so 4.905t squared plus 25t, and then plus 100, because my minus 100 moves over, it becomes a plus. And then, how do I solve this? Well, I have to solve it some way. Solve. So how can I do this? I could use a graph. I could use a solver. I could find the quadra I use a quadratic equation. You know, there's a lot of ways of doing this. In this case here, let's see, I'm going to just use my poly root finder. That's my polynomial root finder. That's what my calculator has. I mean, lots of calculators have different ways of doing it, but I kind of like this polynomial root finder. I'll just use that one. So let me just show you how I would do that on mine. Because um, you could have just graphed this thing, by the way, and found the zeros of it. There's a lot of ways. So I'm going to just put in this equation. So first of all, I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to new here. And I'm going to say, okay, give me, 
I'm going to go to menu here and do algebra and do polynomial tools. I'm going to do the find the real uh, find the roots of a polynomial. So what's the degree? It's to the power of two. So I'll put that in. Now what are my coefficients of a? A is the number in front of x squared. So in this case it's going to be a minus 4.905. 4.905. The next one's going to be plus 25. And the next one is going to be 100. I say go, and it tells me my roots. Let's see, so enter. So notice it gives me a negative root. I'm going to ignore that because it doesn't make any sense to have a negative time. So I'm going to write this one. So 7.733 or so. so. That means I have that. So t equals approximately 7.73 seconds. That's important. I needed that because now I can put that into this original equation. So I'll say so. Finally then, this is what I needed to know. So sx equaled 43.3 times t, and now I know my t. My t is 7.73 seconds. Remember, because that's what I just found it here? So because of that then, I'm going to take that one and just calculate this. So that means I'm just going to say, okay, 43.3 uh, times 7.73. There's approximate. I know I'm losing some decimals. I should have used all the decimals, but 334.709 is going to be pretty close. Okay, and I need to know this to uh, how many significant figures here? Just a 2. So if I really want to do this, then I'll say SX then is approximately equal to 330, let's say, meters. That's about as good as I can do with my significant figures here. And that's because it's to two significant figures. There we go. So was that a tough question? Yeah, I think so. I think what made it hard is that um, you needed to find t. Had you been given t, this would have been dead easy, just sx equals you know v times t. But because we need to find the time and because it ended up being a quadratic, I thought that made it kind of tough. But if you can solve something like this, you can solve anything. I think this is about as hard as it'll ever get. That's the good news. But a very, very common type of question on the exams though really is something like this right here, where you're supposed to find the maximum height. And the trick to maximum height is make your vy equal to zero. In other words, your final, your final, you know, speed in the y direction is going to be zero at maximum height. That's the trick.